you're listening to Death of the Reader. Flex and Herds here with you for your Murder Mystery World Tour. And Herds, mm. it's that time. <laughs> the final book for our 2020 run of been, Death of the Reader. We've been doing this for two years. This is too long. That's not true. Herds, long enough. Let's double it. You've challenged me to this book. What is it? What am I up against? Uh, yeah, this is the, the, the Honjin murder case. We'll be covering chapters uh, one to seven. Uh, there being a strategy meeting written in 1937, I believe, but only translated like within the last two years. It's been a long time coming. That was um, that was very surprising to me. Yes. Because it's so this well known. Mm. is so Western. Yeah. I remember when we were reading Edogawa Rampo, there was that whole ordeal of him trying to prove that you could set a murder mystery mm-hmm. in Eastern culture where you have these paper walls. And Seishi Yokomizo has really kind of done the same yeah. thing, Ad- admittedly a few years later. You know, the point had been proven, but mm. this was the first uh, award winner from the Mystery Writers of Japan, which was the club that Edogawa Rampo mm-hmm. founded. And this is so Western, not just because it has kind of the Western standard set up, mm. but also because it spends so much time referencing all of the author's favorite Western murder mysteries. Is it really a reference when you just list the names of all of your favorite murder mysteries yeah. in the novel? Like, we've gone beyond reference at mm. this point. Like, even in the explanation of what's, you know, the events of the story... You know, there's like, this was just like the Yellow Room murder. Yes. And, you know, da, 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 which I think you've read, which is going to help you, I, <laughs> I, I imagine, in the future. But uh, but yeah, like we go beyond just subtle references of like, we're in the Edogawa district, but to this case was like this murder mystery. Yeah. This clue was kind of like what happened in this murder mystery. Yeah, basically the pitch of this novel is yeah. that Seishi Yokomizo is a traveling writer who goes yes. around finding real murder mysteries that yes. actually definitely totally happen. Really happen. And I am going time. to share them with you, my yeah. dear readers. I, I really enjoy uh, the poetry of this novel mm. as, as the way that it's written from this person's perspective because he's constantly, he's kind of, the author is taking this as an opportunity to toy with the audience and get yeah. really hype about himself, which I love. I mean, the way that the first novel or oh, sorry the first chapter ends and this is this is why uh, I really enjoyed this novel yeah you know we're introduced to the three-fingered man who's mm-hmm. like a core suspect in this in this case um and the koto is also said to be an important thing it's like yes. a musical instrument Japanese instrument and it, at the very end of the first chapter the author says and I know what you're thinking dear reader yes the koto can be played with those three fingers that the mm-hmm. three-fingered man has left like it's very self-aware it's very just excited to tell you a real true story of murder that happened and it it sails on this wave of hype all the way to the finish line i am torn herds (laughs) Because oh, on the one hand, I love how <laughs> quaint all of these chapter ends are, where sure. it just comes in and it says, if you're an attentive reader, you'll have noticed you'll have this noticed. clue. Yeah. But it won't be until later that you realize how much of a clue I, it is. I imagine that it's probably <laughs> helping you a lot because you're the kind of reader who who thinks about intent uh, a lot. Yes, so yes. these like little subtle nods are probably very helpful for you. But very we'll, we'll on the nose. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in the solution. Um, I, I do want to say the actual murder that we're solving today is the murder mm. of a, a a bride and and groom on their wedding night, no less, yes. in a a locked room mystery. The key is like inside the room, and there's like a sword in the ground, and there's you know they're both just dead in there, and uh, it's it's a classic setup. You know, it's a classic like everybody's here for the family wedding, but not too many people because then we'd have too many suspects. That's right. And the snow settles in and nobody can leave the the mansion or the, mm-hmm. the house or whatever. It's a, it's a man. It's a family mansion. There's this wild plucking of the Koto strings in the nights. Mm-hmm. And so there's all these seemingly, like there's a diagram with all these seemingly disjointed clues. Um, and it's up to, up to us, obviously, to try and solve this novel. Uh, without a detective so far. So, With, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, Herds, we've done the standard move yeah. of introducing the detective, I presume, in the later part of the story. Yes, well, I, I mean, chapter I, eight. <laughs> chapter eight is his name, so... Okay, yeah. I was I was going to ask, because... <laughs> yeah. I, I'm familiar with uh, Seishi Yokomizo's detective, yeah. but I am, have not actually read yeah, any no. of the story, so I wasn't sure whether this is actually one of them until you I, just told me. I, I'm not surprised 
but I am surprised. Rather, I would be surprised if, if somebody you know in Japan hadn't heard of this detective as part of the, the yeah. mythos, because apparently there are 77 of these, not necessarily full stories, like full books, mm. novels, but 77 short stories and tales about uh, about Kosuke Kendaichi. Um, obviously, he hasn't shown up yet, but he's the, sort of eccentric uh, Japanese detective in the style of the ones that we've already seen on the show. Um, he had a he had a solve the mystery. Hopefully, yeah, it, it's yeah. very much in that same Western style where we have uh, <laughs> where we have just a stack of short stories alongside every yeah. major series. Absolutely, and uh, you, you got to love it. It's 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 just that yeah. little bit quaint. Yeah. I will say it's the quaint. one the one thing that has been particularly interesting about the writing, and I know mm. this might be verging on the mystery, but sure. I do like just how ambiguous all of the clues are thus far in the story. Yes, yeah, and we'll, we'll get into another part of that in the last part <laughs> of the show because I have to really go nuts to try solve this one because sure. there are points on the line. There's a the last book of the year. That's There's a true, lot at stake. True. We are doing double or nothing, which means that whoever has the least points at the end of this book goes to zero. For Anything, next could year. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Now, the question I have and the thing that fascinated me is particularly the snow. Mm. One thing that bothers me about it is that Mm. we aren't really told the rules of the snow. It is hinted out both that, oh, yes, the snow makes it very easy to see footprints, Mm -hmm. but then also made kind of ambiguous as to whether maybe it snowed over footprints that were already there. this This is the question, isn't it? We, uh, we know that the snow started sort of during the night and the murder happens at 4 a.m. Yeah. But, but yeah, you, you are right in that, you know, our, our crowd of onlookers comes to the door just after 4 a.m. When the, when the murder happens and who knows, maybe the killer is like in that group of people, maybe they've, you know, sprouted wings and flown away. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. That's part of the fun. We'll, we'll speak about the wings in the last part of the show, Hurts. Oh, no. But the, the other one that's really fascinating to me is the motive in this story. Yes. Because, admittedly, this isn't a particular mm. outlier. I just think that the execution <laughs> here is a little peculiar. Sure. In that everyone in this story seems to be insane. Yes. We have Ginzo, who is uh-huh. seemingly the only reliable character in the yeah. cast. Yep. And Kenzo himself is said to be quite eccentric, though he's it's a bit more that he's just particular, it seems. Yes, Kenzo with an E, that's a that's a character. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, no, and, and that is the the murdered groom, of course. Uh Kenzo and and Katsuko. Yes. Um, and I did want to touch on there's also obviously the Koto is a an element of this story. And uh, I know this will play into your theory at all, Flex, here, but we spend a lot of time discussing during, and this yeah. is part of the setting the scene, right? Because this is a very short book, I think, compared to the ones that we, we usually cover on the mm. show. But we spend a lot of time talking about how for the wedding day, for the ceremony, the wife is the person who's supposed to play the koto. And they say, well, we don't know if Katsuko could even play the koto. So let's get the little girl, Suzuko, who's the like kind of um, touch in the head little girl. Mm-hmm. Um, we get, we'll get her to play the, the, the Kurto. Uh, and then it, it, you know, it comes back around and Katsuko says, well, why didn't you ask me to play the instrument? And like, well, we didn't know if you could play. She says, well, I can play. So, well, we, you can't play the special ceremonial song, but you can play this other song. Like the Kurto passes hands multiple times and it's like present at the scene of the murder at the end. I don't uh-huh. know if that's going to factor in, but like the amount of time we spend on such a small detail it's got to be significant somehow. Well, oh, I mean, obviously, Herds, and it will factor in. But the other thing I really love about it is that what is clearly a technical clue is so expertly masked with the Koto as an atmospheric clue. For sure. Like, it's it's masked as kind of the motive, you know, because it's all about the tradition of playing the lovebird mm-hmm. song at the wedding. Sure. And then we get to the actual scene of the murder and someone's wildly playing a Koto as mm-hmm, the crime mm-hmm. seems to be happening. It's eerie. And, you know, and just the atmosphere and the way that the three-fingered man is kind of framed yeah. as, ah, oh, he's the mi- mystical Koto player who only has three fingers and they're just the Koto playing fingers. Yeah. It's it's clearly a clue, <laughs> yeah. but just the way that it is written yeah. would make Van Dyne smile mm-hmm. because he says that we cannot have any dilly-dallying with the atmosphere in our murder mystery novels, mm-hmm. But, Mr. Van Dyne, as as uh, Seishi Yokomizo is clearly a fan of yours, quoting your book several times in this stretch, uh, we actually kind of see how an atmosphere can be built while still being a part of the puzzle. Yeah. I will say, uh, before we round out, you know, everything that we love about this novel, it's right, we got two more weeks to, to indulge <laughs> ourselves here. One of the clues that I particularly found interesting um, was they give you a map. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a map of the grounds and all of, there's like 16 different 
points of interest, one of which is these footprints that are found sort of Mm -hmm. on the edge of the grounds. And it's not something that's been mentioned so far in the story. So when it shows up on the map, I was like, oh, there's footprints though. That that seems like this can be important. I did. And then the very next paragraph, it seems like, you know, attentive readers might have noticed there's some footprints on that diagram. Let me tell you about why they're there. Like the, the sense of flow that this story has when we're moving from clue to clue to clue. Yep. Like there is no wasted space at all in this novel. Absolutely not. Mm. I also did love on that map that point two on the map is the storage closet where the killer hid. Uh, now that is leading the witness. I know my it is. That is. That's great. That is some serious leading That's the great. witness. You're totally right in that the map is used as a piece of the storytelling. Yep. Like yep. it jumps the gun so that the author doesn't have to waste yeah. time it's, later on. It's great. It's a really clever bit of storytelling because the map assumes that you will not try to pick it apart uh, succinctly in the moment. You won't like yeah. look at every little detail and, and, try and you could determine just a mess. the solution at that second. Yeah. But it it does like the visual design of the map is designed so that the different clues will point you towards where the footsteps mm-hmm. are. It's it's actually one of the few murder issues I've read where the visual design... Yeah, it was one of the things when we were talking with Dr. Mike Gross when we were looking at Van mm-hmm. Dyne's work is that Van Dyne was known for including maps that are actually really well integrated. Yep. And it seems that this map is actually a direct pull from something like the Kennel Absolutely. Murder case, yep. which in the film we had the wonderful model of the two buildings next to each other that we loved. And you can hear that now yeah, discussion on that. the Kennel Murder case film. But Van Dyne was known for his maps being quite eloquently integrated to his stories. And Seishi Yokomizo has done a great job of uh, carrying that torch forward. The other thing that's really fascinating about the the kind of presentation of characters and motive in this opening bit, as I was saying, it's mm. very ambiguous, is when we start to look at Kenzo as a character and sure. we look at, ah, uh, you know, he has the photo of the three-fingered man mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. the description, my mortal enemy, and he has yeah. a note that they that's piece great. back together after he shredded it. Yes. And it says something like, the island agreement must be on it. And they're uh-huh. like, what island? Yeah. But I do love the way, again, going on about the ambiguous clues, but I really like how well this masks some of the other elements of the story, because by Raising the questions about what the note said, it completely obfuscates the fact that the note came from the three-fingered man. For sure. It completely obfuscates the fact that supposedly the three-fingered man's picture was like weirdly formal and the detective notices that. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, I'm a very intent-focused reader when it comes to solving mysteries. That sticks out like a sore thumb to me. But the pacing of it does a really good job of just distracting you from it for as long as possible without feeling like a tangent. Yeah. And it's it's really well done in that regard. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is a novel that is written by a mystery buff. Like we we literally have a character in the story uh, named Sebra, the yeah. like, young like reclusive son. He reads murder mystery novels. <laughs> so you know, pr- primary suspect number one over here. Absolutely. Um, but obviously, with having a character who loves murder mystery novels, and and having all of these very obviously deliberate clues, mm. like. The, the author is being very deliberate. And so trying to unpack, it's always, you know, if I may, you know, permit myself a metaphor, it's always mm-hmm. the Schrodinger's box effect <laughs> of, you know, when you're presented the sh- a clue. Schrodinger's uh, Tom of the Dead cat box? That's the one. Uh, when, when we're presented with a clue, for example, there is, I, I believe it's, uh, I'm going to say Ryoji. When, when one of the characters is about to actually uh, take the axe and like knock down the door, mm-hmm. um, I, I believe it's uh, Ginzo who looks behind him with a little bit of distrust as though perhaps uh. there was a moment where he could have obfuscated the fact that the door was locked in the first place. Yes. Which, because we know it's a locked room mystery murder because the author has duly prepared us mm-hmm. for it being a locked mystery room, these are the sorts of clues you say, huh, now is that supposed to be foreshadowing, saying, oh, yes, yeah, so this is clearly an obfuscation and the door was never locked in the first place? Yes. Or is this a genuine, re- like, reaction, mm-hmm. you know, like trying to go back and forth with this cat box, you know, before we, we open the box and reveal the solution, um, we can take almost all of the clues that are deliberately laid out before us in one way or the other. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to seeing which way you take this oh, mystery goodness. Flex. I will, I will issue one small correction. It was Ryosuke, because Ryuji hasn't actually showed up yet. Whatever. He's a nerd. You're right. He's the one who was like, I only just arrived because you called me here. And Genzo, Ginzo was all, you, you. He's that's, lying. That's a lie. And we don't know why he thinks it's a lie yet. I'm we'll terrified to, find, to, we'll find, to find, out. find out. Maybe Ginzo's just yeah. keen on people. Who knows? Maybe, it, maybe it's just that Ryuji is the murderer, and that's, that's as simple as it is. That would be so good for me. <laughs> so good for me. Nice. You're listening to Death of the Reader. We are Flex and Herds discussing the Honjin murder case by Seishi Yokomizo. We'll be back with more of that in 
just a second. You're listening to 2 ser You're listening to Death of the Reader, Flex and Herd discussing the Honjin murder case by Seishi Yokomizo chapters 1 to 7 this week. And Herd's Flex. the mystery in this one. I know. I know. Tantalizing. It's, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had this screen pulled up to my left here in the studio. Uh-oh. With highlighted on it, mm. no hitherto undiscovered poisons may be used, <laughs> nor any appliance, which will need a long scientific explanation at the end. Herds, yeah. Device X is making its unwelcome return to That's, death of the reader you don't thanks know that. to Seishi Yokomizo. You haven't finished the story. You don't know anything, but if there were a Device X, I would challenge you to try and figure out what the heck it is. Oh, is that going to be the second point then, Herds? Maybe, maybe. Okay, okay. But if you would, if you believe there to be a Device X, I, I'm really going to hammer you on the how in this one. I think the who... I don't think you'll have any trouble getting the who in this one. I, really? Why? Okay, okay. You no, know, whatever. Just who, who, it's 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 arbitrary. We'll really. see how things go next but week. But I actually, how? I'm actually pretty torn on the who. Okay, we'll, so well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But the how? Okay, here's okay. the how. Now here's the thing. <laughs> I have yeah. read a fair chunk of the murder mysteries. Oh, you don't say. You story. don't say. And I, I'm familiar. Word. I'm wise to their antics mm-hmm. when it comes to the lock word room tricks. games, and device X's, device you know, X's yeah. especially. And here's the thing, Herds. Yeah. There's one device X, which we have covered on the show that I won't describe to you. Okay. Because I don't want to ruin- Are you going to tell me what book it's in? It, 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 is, it, is, it, it is from the Kennel Murder Case. Okay. I'm with you. All right? Yep. And that device in this book uh-huh. could bust the crime open in seconds. There's okay. even foreshadowing for it. We have the Koto bridge. We have the Snap Koto string. Mm-hmm. Those two pieces of evidence alone- combined with the information okay. I know about the Kennel murder case, could blow this wide open. Okay. But then we don't explain the glass, the katana, the scabbard, the koto picks, or the sickle. Okay, And that's a lot that's of enough. unused evidence. It's true. That's a lot of evidence that you don't know what's being used for. So, um, Do you think that it's possible to, to determine what device X has been used if there has been one used? Or is this all misleading information to drive you away from the fact that there is no device X at all? It's just, you know, here's, an unreliable witness. Here's the problem I have. Who knows? It's, yeah. We have thus far only seen a koto. Okay. And as a stringed instrument player myself, when yep. I think of the strings murder that weapon. I receive yes. in this story, no, not the murder <laughs> weapon. That's the katana. <laughs> Don't you try me. Okay. Now, when I think of stringed instruments, I normally think that we get a string that is kind of like 30% longer than the instrument requires. Okay. Uh, maybe that's a more modern thing. Maybe they just have giant spools of koto string in, in uh, 1930s Japan. It's possible. But, a koto is about two meters long. Mm-hmm. And the device that I think this mystery requires yeah. needs string significantly longer okay. than than two meters. Do you want to talk about what you think is being done with said string? I want to I want to get in your head here, Flex, because so far you've made vague promises of strings and, and bridges. Mm-hmm. This is clearly a locked room, and knowing some of the other antics, I will say that what I expect Mm -hmm. from these other books, and, you know, maybe this is cheating, all right? Okay, Okay. fine. I've read the other books. I don't know if he uses this trick. (laughs) Anyway, I think what he's on about is that the culprit was not in the room when the crime happened. Okay. The problem is (laughs) that we still need to have the katana land in the snow somehow, either because the culprit left it there or because of device X. Mm. The sickle has to be used for something. Why it is stuck in the tree in particular. The sickle is stuck in a large tree. It's true. And that makes me think it was used to cut a fixed wire. Okay. Now, the only other piece of evidence that I really have to work with here is that there is a water wheel mentioned on the first page of the story, Mm -hmm. and it is very explicitly mentioned that it is broken and that the author walked past it carefully. At the time that the author returns the same, yes. to me, screams, screams that that water wheel is going to become broken as a result of what is done here. Interesting. So perhaps, Herds, perhaps somehow a line was tethered between that water wheel okay. and the sickle, which then cut the string to hide it by like spinning it around the water wheel or something. But then it doesn't make sense because it says that it would have had to have gone over a hill. Yep. So we're kind of back at square one until we find Look. anything that could do that. Maybe <laughs> that's what the Koto Bridge is for, but I don't know how a Koto Bridge can quite get a string all the way over a hill. 
but it's it's so difficult to say, and this is why device X sucks. <laughs> this is what the problem is, is because I could come in here and I could say, well, maybe the culprit wrapped the string around the tree and then fed the wire from the stone lantern up sure. to the hill where the coder bridge was suspended and was making the string go over the hill down to the water wheel where it spun around. And as it was spinning around, the katana started flailing wildly around uh-huh. inside the room. Uh-huh. And the two victims were caught off guards as this katana started bouncing off the floor. But that doesn't make any damn sense, Mm -hmm. Herds. It makes none. It sounds like, Flex, you're being very prejudiced towards Device X, which I'm not a fan of. I I will go on record saying that of all the Device Xs that I've encountered, I think this one is the most uh, reasonable. Is that a challenge, Herds? That is a challenge. Is that a challenge? That is a challenge. Well, no, 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 no. I think you misunderstand. I know you're challenging me to solve this device X. Yeah. Is that a challenge to, to find you mm? a device X mystery to solve That's and see reasonable? if you still and see if you still enjoy it then? Sure. Go for it. All right. I mean, device X is a great. We'll give see. me the yellow room. I haven't actually read that, so who knows? <laughs> Just give me that one. Let's go. Now, I've I've spent ages bouncing around. <laughs> I'm on- enjoying Bouncing around like that proverbial katana. Yeah, like that proverbial katana. Dancing in the wind. Ultimately, uh, I'm enjoying this. All, all I think so far is that the katana has been pulled sure. out of the room after the crime was committed by that string. I, I guess my question is, more deliberately, because you, you've danced around this idea of a string and some a sword. Why would why would somebody go to all this trouble to set up this, this device sex, this mechanism? Well, Ben, you said it yourself. What did I say? There's a murder mystery fan in the story. Okay. Saburo is okay. his name. You think that Saburo is the, the architect of this demise? I think Saburo is it's at Denise? least the architect of parts of this plan. Okay. Because it is very explicitly mentioned that Tama, the cat, died Night suddenly from illness and Night is still age. described as a kitten, though. I am of the opinion, Herds. Not that to dissuade you from your solution, obviously. No, no, no. If course. this cat died suddenly and then Uncle Ihe gets suddenly more drunk than usual at the party to accompany Saburo out. Maybe that is an alibi that Saburo has crafted for himself to get out of the way. He tested the poison he used on Uncle Ihe mm, on the cat, which okay. again is another device X. Okay. Okay. Um, and and then has you know run off with Uncle Ihe into the night, taken Ihe home, sure. come back, killed his older brother, and then escaped back to Uncle Ihe's Wait, so house in the does, morning. Where does the poison function into this? You're saying that this poison that was used to kill the cat to catch them out. Sorry, to kill the cat is the same poison that he slipped into his uncle's drink so yes, that he, he was wouldn't testing be at, it the on party? the cat. Okay. It was like too much dosage on that cat, yes. less for a human. Mm-hmm. Although a, a cat's body is quite small, though. I don't know how you'd really test out a poison design to like hurt humans just, on a cat. It's just suspicious to me that the cat died at all. Okay. You know, maybe the cat's grave is going to be something. We've, we've jested on the show already about the cat box, which is a very common trope in Japanese I you, mysteries. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, we would call it Schrodinger's cat here, but for whatever reason, the cat box. Japanese yeah. translators keep calling it the cat box. It's which, just a simpler way of saying it, I guess, and you don't have to put Schrodinger in there every time. Yeah, so, so it is entirely p- possible that the cat's grave is going to be the cat box of this story. Sure. Um, although the error doesn't quite work out because, you know, nuclear theory was relatively new it's true, when it's true. this story was written. So, you know, yeah, who knows? maybe I'm fishing at the wrong, uh, wrong pond there. Who knows? Maybe nuclear theory is really at the heart of this case. But we don't know. <laughs> I think anyway that Saburo basically used his uncle as an alibi to get out of the okay. scene of the crime. Maybe Ryuji, who clearly, clearly was in town based on what Ginzo has said and based on how suspicious he acts, maybe he was assisting him. Maybe they set up the mechanism together. Sure. Um, so, so your your solution here is that Saburo devised the crime. Yes. Ryuji assisted in in what exactly? What did Ryuji do here? What, uh, if he's an accomplice, what what does he do in the like? Because you know how we describe better issues yeah. like puzzles and mathematical equations. You know, you've got saber plus poison plus sword thing equals murderer. Yeah, where does Ryuji fit in that? Why is he necessary? Because well, I mean, you're not Ryuji, wrong. Like Ryuji's in, a doctor. In, in the first crowd scene, mm. uh, it is explicitly said that both Ryuji and Saburo look like nervous yeah. in that scene. So I'm with you on that. Okay. My initial guess was that Ryuji being a doctor came in 
and helped administer the uh, mm. device X to you know knock out Uncle Ike, and maybe actually gave poison of a similar kind or a knockout drug of some kind to Kenzo and Katsuko when they actually got there the next day. Saburo, you know, stabbed him to finish him off or something along those lines. But I think that's leaning on device X too hard. I was going to say, are you, do you think that in such an old school, like classic murder mystery is this, that they would use an unnamed poison? Because you're right, there is a, a dead cat, but there was no mention of, you know, he had weird symptoms and nobody I think has even mentioned poison. Well, the, the thing is is I feel like they needed to get Uncle he- Ihe to leave so that Saburo had his alibi. Okay. So I think that has to be intentional somehow sure. and that's the only foreshadowing I can spot on that right. front. Sounds good. But what I actually think Ryuji did is mm-hmm. I think Ryuji is the three-fingered man. Not ah. that he was the three-fingered man at the beginning of the story, but when the three-fingered man shows up next, oh, it okay. was just after Saburo Wait. has mentioned him. Interesting. And he keeps his three-fingered hand in his pocket. And it is only mentioned that he is dressed in the same clothes. So I reckon Ryuji has showed up with this letter for Kenzo. Interesting. Dressed as the three-fingered man to give to the maid so Mm. that they can kind of frame the scene of the crime. Interesting. While Saburo makes his escape under the guise of Uncle Ihe. So maybe Ryuji can come in and finish it. I will say it'd be a pretty interesting twist if this three-fingered man, you know, this character that the story is leaning so heavily on, you know, wasn't actually the three-fingered man, you know? But then, who is the three-fingered man? Why are they in the first scene of the story? Is that not also Ryuji dressing up as the three-fingered man? I don't think so. Or is that is there actually a three-fingered man? I, I think there is actually a three-fingered man. I think some that kind the, of Robin Hood character. Mm, I, I think that we're given too explicit of a description to discount him as a real character. Sure. I don't know. The only thing that does make me suspicious is that they say his photo in Kenzo's book looks yes. like something you'd find on a document. Sure. And the only thing I can think there mm. is that maybe he was brought, like, maybe he's a hired gun. Yeah. Maybe it was just an ID document he was yeah, carrying sure. on him that they stole. I yeah. don't think I really have enough to well, work with there. I mean, look, there's a lot of clues we could go over, but there's also in the um, in that, that notebook with his mm. picture of, like, my mortal enemy. Yeah. There's some, like, passages um, that they've, they've tried to, like, piece together from, like, like the burning in the furnace or whatever. Um, talking about this like girl who uh, Kenzo or Fuyo was or something on, like o- that, Ophuya, yeah. who was murdered. How, how does that? Fi- how does love feature into this story? Oh, that's Flex. a load of rubbish. That's a load that's of rubbish. A load of rubbish. Okay. The thing that confuses me is it's set. The scene is set as though Kenzo is the one burning all of those notes. Sure, sure. Which does make me suspicious of Kenzo, though. I don't think we've had quite the foreshadowing to actually, you know, pin him as a the culprit in a murder suicide yet. Okay, sure. Um, plus that also would discount Saburo, but mm. it is like five pages of notes that survive, which sure. all seem to loosely tie into the extremely vague motive <laughs> below the man's picture sure. from three years of diaries that it's are true. burned. It's true. It is a lot of information. If he was trying to burn a story, yeah. sure. It, it, I, I will give you that much. Those passages definitely like seem like a plant. Um, on, my, on my first read, for sure. So what's what's your final verdict? Your, my your final is, verdict. Saburo is the murderer mm. with help from Ryuji, I, and there's a device X in there somewhere. I, I reckon Saburo uh, devised a device X for Ryuji to activate sure. after playing the three-fingered man and kind of stomping the sure, mud into sure, the sure. house. Sure. The motive, I think, so far is just that the entire family is insane and they're concerned about the lineage because there's that mention okay. where it's like, ah, th- uh, yes, you know, the cool wind eventually w- winds out over the hot breeze or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, you know... They air th- out the windows sometimes. Well, I, I think that the cool breeze in this case is going to be Saburo and his slowly concocted plan. Sure. It is kind of hinted that there's also a monetary gain in there for yes. Saburo, though. Yes. Saburo is going to get 50,000 yen in insurance. Mm. Um, and Ryuji is the person who would like get all of his elder brother's holdings. Yeah. So they are by far the two who have the they most They definitely to gain. stand the most to gain. For sure. Um, though the thing that confuses me there is mm. I feel like if that's what they were after, they would have hidden it more and it's come up very early in the story. So I, I think that that's going to be a bit of a red herring, if at least only a partial motive. Sure. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to find out uh, next week how you do. Do we have more clues? more solutions to throw at me and we'll want to see how you go. I'm liking your theories so far. You're obviously thinking very deeply and pondering 
uh, all the deepest secrets. This, this mystery has been a lot of fun so far, but yeah. is making me angry. Yeah, well, this is the thing, right? It is, in in some respects, a simpler mystery. It's definitely shorter than the most of the ones that we do, um, but it's also very, very aware of itself and the strategies that it's using. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, now that we've ended on a strategy meeting, uh, we'll be <laughs> challenging you to, to read chapters 8, uh, all the way to the end of chapter 13, where Inspector Osakawa is shaken. Uh, and we'll see if you can solve the mystery by then. Fantastic. I'm excited. You're listening to Death of the Reader. We are Flex and Herds. We have been discussing chapters 1 to 7 of the Honjin Murders by Seishi Yoko Mizo. And we'll be back with that next week. You're listening to 2SER. <laughs>